Hey, been a while. <laughs> My fault. I'm losing it. Can't keep up. Oh, we gotta start this again with the camera. See, this is why I don't shoot videos all the time because it's nothing but aggravation. I don't need any more aggravation than I already have. So anyways, this is an 06 Impaler. It impales your wallet. Gives you nothing in return. But besides that fact, uh, what uh, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind, I'm telling you. Anyways, I was gonna show you this for the thing. Crapped out on me again. We got a steering rack, we got a little pressure chart that is meaningless to me. Got some Moog end links. I just got this fantastic idea. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of electronic cameras. We're gonna go back to the the old eight millimeter and we're gonna create a, a channel similar to YouTube where it's all just moving pictures on a wall that would just work so much better for me I, I cannot stand electronics anything electronic in my possession sucks and it, it, oh my god I'm telling you I could go on a huge rant anyways where were we so this thing Another shop put in a uh, power steering pump and it didn't fix the problem. We got no steering. It makes a whole lot of moaning and groaning sounds. And uh, to be honest with you, we're kind of winging the pots cannon at this thing because uh, the owner said that the lines were changed, which they were not. They don't look new to me. This is gonna be a problem at some point. Oh, I can bet on that. And probably tape that up for him. Um, Da, da, da. yeah so that wasn't done I just took what little fluid out of it I could I can't get the turkey baster down in there deep enough but uh, this is the uh, mighty 3.5 if I'm not mistaken da, 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 da. 2006 model year three and a half liters so this is not gonna be a fun job from what I've been seeing in my research uh, you basically gotta take the whole stupid cradle down i mean the engineer you know you know how i am i rant about this stuff all the time why would you why would you build a car like that why do that why stick the friggin rack way up inside you know you ain't gonna be able to see nothing i gotta get you up in here so look at this what a place for a rack look at this how am i gonna get that out of there yeah so you gotta take this you gotta drop this whole cradle down Sway bars right in the way. Is that broken? Oh yeah, sure. Yikes almighty. That ain't no good. Man, just the build quality of these cars today is just, it just, it's astounding. Look at the road salt holes everywhere. This thing's, this thing is probably not too long for this world. Oh my God. Oh my lordy. Yeah, but with the cost of new cars, some people don't have a choice. They got to keep fixing what they got. So this is the this is the world that the government has created for us. What can I say about that? I can say a lot, but I'm not gonna. So, anyways, yeah, real nice, real friggin' nice, buried. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. This is ridiculous. We yank the wheels off. We'll knock these uh, end links out. Probably be wise to loosen those first before we do that. Let's get some new struts. I guess those fell apart when the guy put it on the lift. The whole wheel fell off the car. <laughs> the whole assembly shifted violently to one side. So, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun. All right, I gotta go play around my face melter here before it fumigates me. Uh, yeah, that thing's gonna drive everybody nuts, but uh, I, it's 30 degrees out here, so it is what it is. <sighs> Are we rolling down here like a snowball headed for hell? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, my brake job's still holding up. Those are Ray Bestus brakes, brake pads, and uh, I believe that Ray Bestus rotors too, they were coated. Just 
still looks good. I can't even remember when I did this. It's quite some time ago. Oh my God, look at the wires in there. Are you freaking kidding me? How is this thing even running right now? Wow, wow, wow. This is the way this is gonna go today. Off to a wonderful start, as always. Okay, plan B. The pipe of persuasion. If it don't move, we break something. Well, that was easy. The whole thing's turning. <laughs> Well, that don't much matter because the whole rack's getting changed. Crescent wrench day. Oh my god. Are you freaking serious? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a fun one, I tell you. Oh my lord. There we go. Oh, I should have listened to my mom. I've become a dentist. Here we go. I'm gonna start swearing already. I'm not even two minutes into the job. It's already going to hell in a handbasket. You know what? I'm just not even gonna bother with that. I don't know why I am. Cause we just gotta knock that out of there. This whole thing's getting thrown away. Gotta use your head. It's all working. The camera thing is a diminishing skill set. You gotta keep on that stuff. Otherwise you forget. Okay, so I went ahead and got this other one off of here. Gotta count the turns on that one. Not that that gets it very precise, but this thing's got to go in for an alignment anyway, so we just got to drive it from here to the guy's house to the alignment shop, and that's about that. Yeah, we got to fix that, that's for sure. That's going to cause some issues down the highway. Let's see if I can find some old conduit I might have laying around, or uh, not conduit, but uh, loom. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so I'm getting sidetracked here. So what we got here is failure to move. Uh, we got, yeah, see that stupid ass thing? Why do they do this stuff? So I gotta pry that up, try to get a, I guess there's a pinch bolt in there for the uh, steering shaft. And looks like we're gonna have to go up top for the power steering lines. So you got these lines here, but these, some of these stay attached to the rack. It looks like a jumbled mess of crap, which it is. But if you look on the uh, on the new one, you can see you see you got those two uh, you got the two that's where the uh, power steering lines go, and these just stay on the unit. So that's, those are those other ones that we were looking at. You don't have to touch those. And uh, anyways, so that's where we're at. Uh, I guess I'm gonna try to decide what to do first. I guess we could try to. I'm not exactly sure how to get that rubber piece up and off. I'm gonna give it a little nudge with the big pry bar. See what happens here. Can't see what the heck's attached to it. Ah, okay. It just pops up. That's easy enough. Okay, I see the bolt now. Looks like I'm gonna have to pull this pry bar up to be able to reach it. So we're under the uh, driver's side. That's the best I can do with that camera angle. But I got a long extension up in there. It's an 11 millimeter socket. Ah, this is my bad hand. I gotta make sure I don't smack that. I don't wanna go through surgery again. This thing took forever to heal. As you 
you can see. Still got the nice scar there. You gotta be there forever. That's what happened. That's that 11 millimeter hex head on that. Looks like they put a little bit of factory Loctite on there. It's 14 turns to get that tie rod in there. It's got my grandfather's old drop light. This thing's going way back. It's a little, it's in a little bit of rough shape, but still works. It's even got a modern LED in there. Switch still works. Man, my grandfather used this Ever since I can remember, this was hanging on a wall and I was just two feet tall. This thing was over there. Quartomatic Model 500. Six amp, 125 volts. Yeah, I could put it right here. That way I can uh, get some light under the car without forgetting my magnetic stuff underneath like I have 17 times already. All right, back to work. So we're down in here. That's the best I can do with the GoPro, but you can see the two bolts there. One of them's leaking, and nobody replaced any lines on this thing. All right, so this is where we're at. Got it loose. A little crow's foot. Alrighty, we got those off. I just fell down the stairs. <laughs> what the frag, man? I'm just the year I. I have to break every bone in my body. I just whacked my kneecap. Man, let me tell you. Don't get old, kids. Can't see in the dark anymore. That's my problem. <laughs> this thing's barely burning. I got to turn almost down to nothing. And the glass is still over 600 degrees. Got some good oil in there. I don't know what oil I got, but it must be synthetic or something. Anyways, so now... Yeah, we're gonna go back up with this thing. I uh, probably want this. What else am I leaving up here? Yeah, my light, that would be nice. Oh, get on out of there. We'll pop her up and uh, drop that <coughs> cross member down or uh, cradle, whatever the hell you call it, K-member. Get that down and uh, we got two bolts to undo and I think we're home free. <coughs> well, you guys ain't gonna be able to see much here, but. I ain't as strong as I used to be, I'll tell you that much. That whole thing turning. Nope, it's not. Of course, I got power steering fluid going in my ear right now. So that's nice. You know what's kind of weird is, I didn't see a whole lot of power steering fluid come out. I would have expected a little bit more than I saw. So that might be an issue. Yeah, we're gonna be here a while. Boy, I got too much stuff on my car here. As usual, what else is new? How the hell are we supposed to get this off? You know, freaking take the whole sway bar out? Ah, oh, jeez Louise. I guess, I guess if I lower this down, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to. It's the only way that's gonna come out of it. All right, let's start on the other one. I think I might be able to get a socket in here, possibly. Might need an extension. Mm-hmm, that'll work. This is some dumb engineer, man, I'm telling you. I'm partial to full frame vehicles. Not these cobbled together things, but. Shiite. That don't seem to want to come out of here. You. Trying to control myself. It's, it's difficult. God, I see so much stupidity in engineering. You know what's funny? I, 
<laughs> it's not really funny. It actually kind of sucked, but I got a 2014 Troy built lawn tractor right behind me. And uh, you can't get the bowl, you can't get the carburetor off of that unless you undo the cylinder head. <laughs> well, that's one way of doing it, but you have to pretty much take the whole intake manifold off and rotate it 90 degrees and then you can kind of get it by. Boy, and that's like, you, you know, you in this day and age, you're gonna be taking carburetors off. The fuel is awful. I feel a rant coming on about the state of affairs in this world today. Bad gas, bad economy. I, I could go on all day about that. But I'm not gonna. This is supposed to be fun. Wee hoo! It's supposed to be. I'm not having much fun right now. My knuckles are hurting for certain. Yeah, I never went to physical therapy for this thing because I don't feel like driving all over this state. So these are, and I forgot to bungee hook those. I was gonna do that and I got sidetracked. So these are the uh, pressure and return lines for the power steering. These are gonna be right in my way. Crap, oh, blow the car down again. So what's been happening? So I haven't shot a video in, geez, it's gotta be 10 months. Or, yeah, 10 or 11 months. Last video I shot was, uh, oh no, actually it was it was after that. It, my first flight when I got back from Florida. <clears throat> I got that on video, that was fun. I need to revisit my ground handling skills so I don't get another scar on my other hand next time. That was my own fault. There you go, okay. A big long bolt. So that other one, the only way we're gonna get that down is uh, lower the subframe here. So other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot going on. Kinda had to take a step back here for a little bit last year. Just got stuff falling over there. <clears throat> I was getting burned out, stressed out, needed to regroup which I did got to get trained down in Florida that was nice went down helped my buddy Chris Fenimore there he's got a channel on YouTube you guys probably most of you guys know him went down helped him move from North Carolina to Florida which is where I want to go move but the wifey isn't on board with that I want to get out of this state and be done with all the BS, live free, live happy, you know. Anyways, maybe someday I'll convince her. But as of right now, she's not on board. Her parents are still alive and uh, she's still working at the same place she's been at for 30 years. So kind of tough to change when you Got all that going on, you know. <clears throat> I can't blame her there. down south I think three times of that thing yeah I went to Florida twice but I didn't take the truck to that time we took uh, Chris's U-Haul <clears throat> but uh, I did go down with him so I was in Florida twice this year which was great whoa it dropped down immediately so Made, some, made a long trip to Pennsylvania. 
did my usual towing routine. So I've been been around. This isn't what I expected. So the sway bar, yeah, sway bar is attached to this. That sucks. I'm probably gonna have to unbolt it. I don't know how far I can go with this before bad things start to happen. So yeah, on the Silverado note, <clears throat> I got low oil pressure. I'm at 117,000 miles as of right now. Oil pressure is getting pretty low. So we're gonna be doing an engine swap video here pretty soon. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, my wallet is taking a beating. Anyways, so it looks to me like stupid way of doing it. I should have put this way away. What I was thinking. Here comes the engine. Right in my face. Okay. Now I got some space. It's going to come down quite a ways. Oh, you know what? I never took the uh, steering shaft off. That could be an issue. <laughs> so that steering shaft can only go on one way there's a it's got two flats on each side you know facing left to right and then right in the front of the car there's a divot and that's where the bolt goes through so you got to take that bolt all the way out which I think is pretty obvious but okay I guess I don't need a lab taller than I thought it was job you're doing this on the ground. I'll tell you that I did that for the first 30 years of my life. Oh man the face melter is not happy today. A little bit of antifreeze and white. She got pissed. Something just fell off of that twist it. Boot here. Is part of that supposed to stay with this? I think so. That is a plastic. 
plastic ring in there. This thing's got a plastic ring on the base. Looks just like that. So that tells me I gotta pry that thing out of there. That should be fun. pretty important these o-rings gotta go gotta go don't want to reuse those this thing looks like a freaking mess here yeah. i got a little silicone grease to put on these plenty of grease on them and they are the right size which is nice What the frig is happening here? <sighs> You're gonna piss me off now. <clears throat> Come on, stupid thing. Are even close to where I'm supposed to be? Nope, not even. There we go. That one. Come on. The bushings are a lot thicker on this new one. Holders. There we go, okay. Here it is. That pops out. We don't even have this thing even close to where it needs to be. 
it moves nice and easy, but when you try to push it, it don't move. What a friggin' place to put something. Taking it out is easier than putting it back in, which is unusual. There you go. Man, is that tight. Holy criminy. Okay, too far. Okay. Whew, I gotta go stand outside for a bit. I'm sweating. Not a bad problem to have in January in the Northeast. Okay, which way did these go? Here's this way. Yeah, when they did the surgery on my hand, it's all numb, so I have to be really careful because I, I put it up against sharp things and I don't feel that bad things happen. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, here we are. Can't see. Oh, okay, so those are in. I'm gonna try to get this steering shaft lined up before I get too far ahead of myself. So that's the best I can do there. Ugh. Stupid magnet, don't stick to nothing. Everything's made out of exotic metals. I kept telling you, this filming stuff is a pain in the neck, guys. But I am getting paid for it now, which is good. I appreciate everybody subscribing. It makes it a, it'll really pay you a whole lot, but not at my level. Sorry guys, you guys are in my way. This just ain't gonna happen. Oh, I didn't give up yet. I'm trying to get you guys in here. Okay, so that's on a little swivel in that. Oh, I got it all screwed up. Where the hell did it go? Yeah. Tell you, these guys know how to engineer stuff today, huh? <laughs> Not in a good way either. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, this is going to be a wicked pain in the ass. I'm just going to shut this camera off because uh, I'm going to yell a lot. It's aiming the total wrong direction. It's going to be pushed up. And you, you just got to battle with it. I don't know how I'm going to get this plastic rubber piece back on. That's going to be fun. Why does that seem like it's aiming the total wrong way? Well, it's the same direction the other one's aiming in. Just seems like it's way off for some reason, but this is what so it is. close. Uh, Extremely close. Almost got it. I don't know what you guys can see. I got your way in there. You're upside down, you're backwards. Got that thing pretty much right there. Just got to be turned a certain way. The steering wheel started spinning on me. It didn't spin and ruin the clock spring, but it turned probably about 15 degrees or so, which screwed me up. But part of this industry is knowing when to walk away. And that time is now for me because I'm feeling violent. I'm going to punch something. <laughs> he just... Oh my God, these cars, they drive me insane. I'm, I can't even explain to you. I hate modern vehicles. I hate them, but oh, it's just every battle is a new battle. It's insanity, but I'm done. There's no more light out there. It's dark. I'm getting angry. Time to call it a day. Before I uh, call Pick it, it a day tomorrow. here. I put the bolts in here just to kind of secure this thing because one thing I didn't realize, you're fighting spring pressure. When you take these bolts out, you have all the strut spring pressure on this thing. So that's uh, kind of dangerous. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run these in just a little bit. It'll make me feel a little bit better before I go in. Yep, still here. Hasn't gone anywhere. It's not on the ground, it just looks at Mr. Fix It. Someone gave me this. <laughs> we got uh, on this filming thing. Let me uh, backtrack what I got going on here. Yeah, so we got the, uh, what you can see there. We got the tie rod ends, it's all tight. 
tightened up the rack. Just put the uh, transmission lines on. Ah, uh, transmission. Yeah, power steering lines are all hooked up. Just finished doing that down on the rack. So that's all set. So uh, I figured I had forgotten about the bleed procedure. Easy to bleed since the pump is the highest point of the system. So naturally all the bubbles I want to are gonna want to go up and come right out of right out into the reservoir <clears throat> so I think I'm gonna just level this thing off a little bit so we got that level go ahead and dump some fluid in here and what I'm gonna do I do it pretty much the same on most vehicles is you, you fill the uh, reservoir up and uh, holy crap Yeah, you fill the reservoir up and uh, turn the wheel lock to lock without it running a couple times just to get the fluid moving, come out, check it again before you start it. <laughs> One thing I learned the hard way over the years, don't ever add fluid when the engine's running. <laughs> Unless you want Old Faithful when you shut the car off. That's always fun. It gets all over the belt and then you have a grand old time cleaning that up. So, don't do that. Getting sidetracked here. Yeah, so we're gonna add fluid and uh, start doing that, I guess. Check all the lines, make sure they're not rubbing on stuff. I think I left, nope, I did not leave my light up in the vehicle. That's a first. Usually leave it up there. Check all this stuff. I might want to put a zip tie on that. Just to, that's kind of close to the. So I like to check this stuff before you fire it up, you know? When you move stuff around, you could have that thing right into the pulley. It's not, but. I don't like it. There's probably a couple uh, plastic clips that got knocked off here during the job. Yeah, here's one of them. No, oh, it's still on there. I just don't know where it's supposed to be sitting. Yeah, see, this is touching the exhaust. That's, that's the kind of stuff you want to look for. We don't want that, especially the cat. That's the hottest part of the whole exhaust system. A gap in there. So you need, that's better than being butted right up against the cat, you know, there's a cat there. That's, at least it's at the top half of it. It's not gonna be as hot as down here, but it still gets pretty damn hot. And uh, that's kind of a piss poor design, if you ask me. I, you should have put the bend another two inches over this way, keep it away from there. But uh, whatever, you know, it is what it is. 21st century engineering for you. Areas that I wasn't too happy with. Just put a little piece of foam in there, tighten those up, and doubled up some zip ties. There's, they got this giant cooler line. It's it's just an extra four feet of line that goes out to the left and comes back in. Instead of putting a fin cooler, that was their Mickey Mouse way of uh, keeping the power steering fluid cool. Chevy's always done that, I don't know doesn't seem like many other manufacturers bother with that kind of thing but maybe I, I'd rather have cooler transmission fluid than not cool so I mean uh, transmission I'm on this transmission thing power steering fluid I'd rather have it cooler than hotter for a lot of reasons it's one good thing GM does uh, double check of the fluid it's right up there That makes your uh, bleeding process go much slower when you foam it all up like that. Container or root beer here. See, that's what happens when you go a little too low on the fluid. So I'm gonna let that settle out for a few minutes. 
Anytime you get a customer in, it's always good to check their oil for them. Especially if it's a GM product. They love to eat oil for some reason. You probably noticed that that whining sound it was making. And that, that's a good indication that there's a ton of air in the system. So uh, I, let, I let all the bubbles sit. I went and did something else for about an hour and a half or so. And uh, all the bubbles settled down. And it actually dropped the level quite a bit. That's a, that's another thing I wanted to mention is uh, when you got a lot of foam in there, that's foam air takes up a lot of space. So we, if it if it if it's right on the money with all the foam in there, when it, once those bubbles break, it's going to drop quite a bit. So that's something to keep an eye on. But uh, we're ready to fire this thing up and uh, turn the wheel back and forth a few more times, shut it down, and just check over everything. Then I'm going to put the wheels back on and uh, get some weight on this thing and see if the thing actually has any power assist because that was the complaint before it was it, I drove the car before it, it was like nothing brand new pump and, and nothing was working you know there's a good chance that that brand new pump is bad too you know we still we still don't know if it's gonna work I got my fingers crossed uh, I don't really have the correct equipment to troubleshoot this thing you, you really need a pressure gauge to find out what the pump is actually doing i mean as you can pull a return line off and see if the fluid's uh peeing out of there that's you know that kind of tells you that it's working but it doesn't tell you the whole story could be a check valve plugged up could be a return line collapsed on itself or it's just a piece of crap pump it's just not pumping <coughs> it's always possible. Noisy. Yeah, definitely got some air in there. No doubt about that. Third time. I've already turned the wheel back and forth a few times. I'm going to turn the wheel back and forth a couple times again, and then I'm going to start it this time. all that air out of there it's not like the old days you know the old days you used to put fluid in it and burp, 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 and it was done you put it on the ground and you went about your business these newer cars every single thing you do to them that, that requires a fluid takes a hundred times longer to do you know to get air out of the system it's ridiculous a lot of these new cooling systems you need a vacuum pump you know you got to pull a vacuum on the system and feed the whole charge in at one shot. I mean, it's absolutely insanity. You know, a, a DIY guy's gonna have a difficult time doing that. <clears throat> you know, same with the power steering. I, I mean, this is insane, the amount of time it's taken to get all this air out of here. Just when you think you got it all out, <laughs> you fire it up, it's got all kinds of noise going on. I got a few little bubbles. Ain't no idea it's bad. I don't know if you can see that from where you're at, probably not bring it over to you leave a little trail of drips as I go in the name of science but yeah there's no uh, there's no foam like it was the employees valve coming from there oh boy I'm surprised that's not throwing a light that's how bad they are I mean it looks like they've been bad for years and years I think for him it's better to keep adding oil than to tackle that because there's a lot of rust under there and it's just a matter of time for it's gonna be undrivable. You know, back in the day, the bodies rotted out, but everything else lasted forever, you know? I mean, here and there, you'd have, depending on the location, you'd have frames rot out. But that was all fixable stuff, you know? This unibody deal, once, once that's gone, there's no coming back from that, unless you've got you know, deep pockets for something like this. <laughs> You know, it's, it's no Mustang, so might as well send it to the crusher and start again. It's just easier. And that's the way it goes today. So, we can turn the wheel a few more times here. 
I just want to mention too. You probably heard when I was uh, when the, when the car was running that last time. I I rammed it right up against the stop, and the reason I do that is because there's a uh, there's a pressure relief inside the power steering pump, and, and in the past I've had a couple of those get stuck and cause all kinds of steering issues. And then as soon as you go to the stop and blow off that uh, bypass valve both directions, <clears throat> it, it'll clear out whatever is uh, causing the issue. That's worked for me a couple times, so I, I like to do that, especially with a new pump, new rack, you know, go all the way to the stop at least a couple times. But that, that also creates a little bit of a problem. It kind of churns up the mixture and adds a little more air to it sometimes. But, that, that's my explanation for doing that. I, I did it on purpose. So don't yell at me. Yeah, see, it's still dropping down, so. That's how much air was in there. You'd think with the pump being this high, it would come right out of there, but no, it does not. Pain in the ass is what it is. What is it these days? I'm gonna let it sit a little bit and, uh, after about five, ten minutes, I'll come back and wiggle the wheel a few more times. Put the engine off. Wheel around <clears throat> a few more times and got no more bubbles in there. So hopefully when I start it up, she's nice and quiet now. Might not be, but we shall see. Check here. Should be uh, good to go. So you got add cold and hot. We're, we're definitely in the cold arena. The vehicle hasn't been really running all that much. Might be a little bit in between cold and hot. Yeah, see, it dropped down a little bit. So it was a little bit of uh, air in there just a hair above the uh, ad mark so every time it drops down that's more air that's coming out of there which is a good thing almost there i thought i was gonna have to get into that other jug of fluid but it didn't take all that much these reservoirs aren't that big so just that little bit is probably too much Right on the money. Just a hair above it. Like a real hair. So I'm good with that. Actually, I'm gonna put a little, just factor it in the weather. It's about 58 in here. It's about 20 outside. Now it's 56 in here. It's 20 and dropping. Should say sun's going down, so it's gonna be in the teens, single digits, very sure. Yeah, that's just below the uh, high mark, so I'm good with that. Oh, the hot mark, it's not high, it's hot, hot and cold. So that might be a little overfilled, but with the weather we have right now, I'm pretty good with that. Okay, I'm just gonna, the truck just came, we got the goods made in China. Oh, what a disappointment. The last piece was made in USA. Well, that's the world we live in today. So I got a couple end links, sway bar end links I'm gonna throw on. Since this is a steering rack video, I'll save that for another day and get the wheels on, get this thing on the ground, see how it performs. That's now 
It's gonna stay spinning by the time it hits the ground. Bet you a hundred bucks that will be still spinning. Oh yeah, I win. Sweet. Pay up, buddy. 216451. See what she's got. Okay, she's quiet. Oh, oh this guy's gonna be so psyched. He's been driving around with no power steering for like six months. Beauteous. No squawking, no nothing. Oh, we got a little bit of noise there. It's probably still a little air. Yeah, it's got to work its way out. I'm just going to back up a little bit here without going through the door if at all possible. Okay, that's as close as I want to get to that. Ooh, it's 48 in here. fun doing this on the highway when you're doing about 85 <laughs> stuff we used to do as a teenager it's a wonder I'm still here yeah this is a fix I like fixes all right I fumigate myself I hate how Chevy leaves the lights on well you can set that in the DIC here I apparently but I still don't like it all right, well, that's that. This thing's got a new lease on life. Owner is going to be psyched. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed that one. Apologize for the friggin' electronic failures every friggin' time, man. I'm telling you, it's enough to drive you insane. Oh, my God. I can't win for losing with this filming business. I feel like I got a big snot hanging out of my nose. I hope not. For your sake. I got some grease on my head. That's nice. Anyways, so, yeah. It's nice and quiet in here. It's nice and warm, too. About 50. It's about 15. And actually, it's probably colder than that now. Probably close at a 10, getting into the single digits now. Hate it. Want to go to Florida, but the wifey's not on board with that idea. I've got to convince her somehow. I think the way things are going in this state, it might not be too much more convincing, I believe. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Some pilot is fixed. Just got to live to see another day. And, uh... See you on the next one.